Assalamualaikum. Good morning, everyone. So thank you for joining a record, uh, recording video. Okay, today I would like to uh, create a special video uh, for a lecture on week eight. Okay, so hopefully that this video might help you to understand on the topic on uh, marketing channels. Okay, which is a topic for week eight. So let us begin uh, by looking at the progress of our weekly plan, all right? So you will see my screen right now. I'm sharing my screen, okay? Let us take a look at uh, the screen, okay? All right, uh, here is uh, the weekly lecture plan. And so far, we already covered on the topic until uh, week seven, which is uh, pricing strategy. And then for today, uh, we will continue on lecture eight, week eight, please. Okay. Uh, if you notice that uh, this topic is actually referring to the uh, marketing process flow chart. So in here, right, I will enlarge the size. You will see that uh, we are actually uh, covering on the marketing process activities. Okay. And we already covered until uh, week eight until today lah. So uh, please, or distributions or marketing channels will be covered for the third P, which is uh, product. We already covered product, price, and now we move on to the third P, which is place, right? So here we are now, week eight. And then uh, I love to, to remind you that we will also have a midterm exam on today. Uh, the midterm exam start at 9 until 10.30, uh, which means uh, one and half an hour, one hour and a half minutes. Okay, one and a half hours, sorry. Uh, so you will need to go to the ULEARN, right? Go to the ULEARN. In here, you click on week eight, okay? When you reach the week eight, you will see uh, the midterm exam here, and you can start to answer the questions. Uh, there are 30 multiple choice questions that include 30 marks and another 20 true or false statement that contain 20 marks. And the quiz will start at nine o'clock until 10.30 a.m. So hopefully that everyone is ready uh, by nine and start to enroll, start to answering the questions in ULEARN. So once you finish, you can just submit your answers, okay, uh, by clicking submission, submit button, and then uh, hopefully that you'll be able to answer the questions before 10.30 a.m., right? So that is about our midterm exam for today. Uh, the next one will be, we will continue on lecture eight, okay? I will give you this uh, recording video link later. So you will have uh, uh, the lecture eight regarding marketing channel. So you just click on the class notes, you will see the slide uh, PowerPoint be given to you. And also I enclosed the Padlet link. So you can just go to the Padlet link and you will retrieve to the, our Padlet platform, all right? Padlet platform and go to week eight, you will get the additional uh, notes. So please take note that uh, you need to look at the module, okay, by referring to our module, go to page 33 and 34, right? Page 33 and 34, okay? So today you need to read uh, page 33 and 34, uh, sorry, I think. Page 34 and 35, sorry. Page 34 and 35, okay. Uh, 34, yeah, 34 only, okay, because uh, I already changed the number of page. So page 34, sorry, I will do the corrections, okay, in the Padlet later. So um, once you see that uh, in the module, you will uh, go to the third place, okay, the third P, which is place, and please read all the statements, okay, uh, in the module. So by looking at this uh, uh, statement in the module, you will go further on understanding about the marketing channel. So once you open the Padlet, you refer with our module, and then please 
start or begin with uh with uh, the self study in our slide powerpoint okay slide powerpoint so now i will go through each slides in this powerpoint so that uh, you can uh, get some ideas uh, and understand what is the concept of marketing channels, okay? All right, now I will start. So, in Kotler textbook, Principles of Marketing, uh, this, cover, this topic cover uh, in chapter 12, all right? In chapter 12. And why we call it marketing channels? Because we want to transform. We want to transport, we want to deliver our product and services to our end user, to our target market, to our customer, consumer, and also not only delivering the product and services, we are also delivering the values, okay? So uh, the next slide, you will see the case study uh, on Netflix, okay? How this Netflix uh, finding uh, their their ways by embodying the past uh, from their distribution strategy. Okay, uh, it's stated here where we read it through in this slide. Okay, time and again, Netflix has innovated its way to the top in distributions of video entertainment, but to stay atop is boiling, roiling industry. Netflix must keep the distribution innovation pedal to the metal. So. Uh, in 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 these situations, Netflix need to to be innovative. So they need to think what would be the arts distribution strategy, because nowadays uh, people are more uh, more technology advancement, right? So what will be their distribution innovation so that they can that they can uh, proceed for their business, right? So Netflix innovative distribution strategy is. Uh, from DVDs, from DVDs by mail to watch instantly to streaming on almost any devices, and they also creating original content. Netflix has lead the whole impact by doing what it does best. So this is how they revolutionize their distribution strategy. So what's next? What do you think can can be done by Netflix in their distribution strategy. So by transforming from DVD to streaming, live streaming video. So what's next? So you need to think what will be other innovations, other innovative distribution strategy, okay? All right, so in this uh, topic, you will uh, be able to explain, okay? To explain why companies use marketing channels. Okay, why they use the marketing channels and what are their functions, okay, from each of these channels and who are the channel members and how they interact, interact, communicate and how they organize to perform the work of the channel, right? And then uh, you also be able to identify what are major channel alternative when they open the company so what are the uh, what are the major channel alternative that you have when you open a company or business and you also be able to explain how the company select motivate evaluate the channel members okay and then at the end you need also to discuss the nature and importance of marketing logistic and how it integrated the supply chain management in India business. Okay. So we need to understand, we need to explain why companies, why entrepreneurs use marketing channels. Okay. And we need to discuss what are their functions. Right. So uh, we have two, uh, two partners here where we are talking about supply chain value, uh, value delivery networks. Okay. There are two partners. The first one is upstream partners. The second one is downstream partners. So upstream partners are firms or companies, organization that supply raw materials, components, parts, information, finances, expertise that needed to create what? To create a product to offer a service, okay? So this is, we conclude, we categorize as upstream partners. How about downstream partners? So downstream partners include marketing channels 
or distribution channels that look toward the customer okay including retailers and wholesalers so retailers and wholesaler topic will be uh, will be discussed later on the following week after you are after you coming back from your mid semester break all right so we have special uh topic on retailing and wholesaling and we we will do it uh this the discussion with our uh speakers which is uh miss fatin from uniqlo as she will talk and discuss about the retailers in uh, and wholesalers or what are the innovative way what are the technologies that be implemented in their business so uh we will do a webinar after you're coming back from semester, mid-semester break. All right, so what is supply chain? Okay, what is supply chain? Supply chain is a map and sales. You make, you create, you produce, and then you sell it, okay? So it view includes the firm's raw materials, starting from the raw materials, and then you need a productive impulse, and then you will also need to look closely with the factory capacity because you need to produce, you need to make, you need to create, and you also need to sell. Sell what? Sell the product and services. Okay. And we also have demand change. Instead of supply chain, you need to have a demand change. So demand chains refer to sales and re respond. Sales and response. So it suggests that planning start with the needs of the target customer. So you need to 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 make a plan okay and this planning must cover the target customer needs and wants so that's what the word sense and respond is is connected is linked to the demand chain okay so what is value delivery network value delivery network compose the company the suppliers the distributors okay and ultimately your customer who partner with each other so they have a relationship they have a link together and what uh their target because they want to improve improve the performance of the entire value delivery networks okay so value delivery ne 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 delivery network terdiri daripada syarikat supplier okay uh kita panggil pengeluar okay uh pengeluar dan juga pengedar okay distributor and do and 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 not uh the most important is pelanggan ataupun customer dan mereka ni mestilah saling berhubungan mempunyai hubungan yang sangat rapat closely a uh, close relationship okay and while having this relationship they need to improve the performance of the entire system so ada give and take ada win-win situations tak boleh sebelah pihak saja mesti semua sekali terlibat dan juga uh, membantu antara satu sama lain okay and uh, other than that what is value delivery network in making and marketing it lines of cars to uh, this is example case toyota manage a huge network of people within the company plus thousands of outside suppliers, dealers and marketing service firms that work together by delivering the brands. Let's go places. Let's go beyond promises. So this is how they strategize their, their value net network, okay, delivery network among their uh, suppliers, wholesaler, and also the ultimately is customer, okay. Uh, somehow uh, people call it as marketing channels okay ataupun kita panggil distribution channel sama saja marketing channels or distribution channel is what is a set of interdependent that is the keyword interdependent saling uh, saling 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 uh, bergantung antara satu sama lain okay interdependent organizations that help make a product and service available for use for consumptions by the user by the consumer or business user so kenapa kita kena ada marketing channel kenapa kita mesti guna distribution channel sebab uh, ianya adalah satu organisasi yang saling berkait antara satu sama lain di mana membantu untuk 
uh, membuat produk dan juga servis atau perkhidmatan berada dalam pasaran ini untuk kegunaan untuk kegunaan siapa untuk kegunaan pengguna untuk kegunaan perniagaan okey so this is the 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 the, the explanation on what is marketing channel or distribution channel okay so how we can add value sebab kita dah ada we already create our marketing channel or distribution channel so how can we add value to our channel members sebab dalam tu mesti ada members okay remember dia adalah uh, supply chain ataupun delivery network so bila kita ada perkataan chain and networks dia seperti rantaian rantaian iaitu bila kita tengok rantai tu dia saling um, saling apa uh, saling berhubung okey dia tak boleh putus okey it cannot be break it cannot be uh, apa tu uh, what we call it uh, putuslah kan uh, tak boleh tak boleh tak boleh terlepas okey so uh, dalam antara satu satu change ataupun uh, one channel to another channel sini so kita panggil channel lah one channel to another channel uh, how we want to add values okay from one channel to add to another channel so how can we add values okay so uh, transform the assortment of product into assortment of assortments of wanted by customer so whatever you have when you created the product and services it must be from the customer demand itu maksudnya so you need to transform the product the product to your customer as what they wanted okay so the bridge the jambatan the link uh, is okay how we want to 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 hubungkan dia how to link it okay this is how we add the value between one member to another member so uh, time okay time place and we need to look at the gaps that separate the goods and services from user for example like uh, uh, the, the the procedures the standard operating procedures itu juga antara uh, values yang kita boleh uh, masukkan sebab bila kita nak memudahkan okay because you when you add value means that benefits benefits between two parties between uh, for example like uh, manufacturer with the wholesaler manufacturer with wholesaler when manufacturer created produce the products okay so they will transform they will deliver this product from their factory to the wholesaler because the wholesaler will help them to deliver to the uh, the sales agent to marketing intermediaries and from the marketing intermediaries at the end they will uh, deliver to the target market or to the consumer or customer right so uh, in between of these channel members they need to take care of the time time frame the place where they need to put they where they need to deliver the product and service what type of platform that you want to use okay online offline okay so you need to think and how we want to close the gap okay because we want to transfer from uh, our goods and services from one channel member to another channel members this is how we add the values okay this is the layout of the diagram on how a distributor reduce number of channel transactions okay all right so in diagram a okay you will see that manufacturer to customer manufacturer to customer manufacturer to customer so what happened if we have number of contact without distributor without channel member okay this is a uh, example of uh, marketing channels okay so you can see a lot of arrows okay link okay go uh it took like very complicated right so uh very complicated because you need to see that uh the the flow of uh number of contact between manufacturer to customer okay this is the first customer manufacturer to the second customer manufacturer to the third customer it followed by another manufacturer so 
you will see a complicated number of contact without distributors relationship, right? So what happens if we hire, if we have a distributor? So we have channel members. So when we appoint a channel member, you will see it much more organized. Okay, from manufacturer one, so you will contact with the distributor, with the wholesaler, with the retailers, and this distributor will deliver the products to your customer. Okay, perfectly. So this is what we want to have in our marketing channel or distribution channel. So take a look at the box here. What is it just now? Uh, marketing channel intermediaries make buying a lot easier. Okay, for consumers. So you can make a comparison between these two, A and B. Which one you prefer? Definitely you prefer B, okay, instead of A. So again, think about love with the grocery retailers. So how would you go about buying that 12 pack of Coke or any of the hundreds of other items that you will now routinely drop into your shopping cart? So what happened? If you want to buy a Coke and without a retailer, what happens is very difficult to find a Coke, right? So you need to go to the factory and buy the Coke. Is that what you want? No, definitely not. It's better that you go to the shopping mall and just grab the Coke for your own consumption. That is the best thing about marketing channels or distributed channels, right? So what are the uh, adding value? that we can add in our channel members. For example, like we can put some information, a lot of information, okay? Give a lot of information. Information is very important, okay? We need to give information to our marketing intermediaries, okay? For example, like product information, right? Product information, uh, uh, what else uh, in terms of uh, the pricing information, okay? The quality information, right? the operational information, so, so on and so forth. There are a lot of information that you need to uh, share with your marketing intermediaries. Other than that, promotion activity. So what are, what, what are your promotional activities that you use to promote your product and service? So you need to share with your channel members, with your marketing intermediaries. Contact. Okay, contact such as the networks, networking, for example, like from factory to uh, distributor A, distributor B, distributor C, followed by other distributors. So you need to share the contact information, contact number, and how you match between each of these channel members. And how about the negotiation? Is it good? Is it bad? So you must have a very good negotiation among your channel members. And how about your physical distributions? Okay, is it conducive? Is it not? So you must make sure that physical distribution is easy, conducive, okay, and um, fast, right? Financing, okay, you need to share the finance uh, in terms of the financial statement, okay, in terms of the financial breakdown with your channel members. And how about the risk taking when they deliver the product? They also need to bear the risk. So this is what we call risk taking. So how many number of channels that we have in marketing channel or distribution channels? Uh, in 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 this topic, we want to introduce you. There are a few channels such as channel level, direct marketing channel, indirect marketing channel. So there are two actually. Okay. First of all is you need to define what is channel level, okay? There are two types of channel level, direct and indirect, sorry. Direct and indirect, okay? So what is channel level? When we talk about channel level, apa dia? Sebab tadi kita dah pergi kepada supply chain, delivery network, and then we go to the, uh, what we call it, uh, marketing channel, distribution channels, okay? And we make a comparison uh, between where you have the marketing chan uh, channel members or without channel members and how you add value to your channel members and then follow uh, and then continue with how many number of channels that we have. So it's basically look at the situation, the conditions, okay? 
So China le level is a layer of intermediaries. Orang tengah. Intermediaries ni maksudnya adalah orang peteng, orang tengah. Okay, intermediaries. The middleman. So layer of intermediaries that perform somewhere in bringing the product and its own ownership closer to the final buyer. So uh, these intermediaries, what is their job? Their job is to bring, to deliver the product and services and its ownership closer to the final buyer. So they can be, contohnya macam saya bagi tadi, uh, if you want to buy a coke, okay? Uh, definitely the coke from the manufacturer, right? And then who will bring the coke from the factory to the cus to the customer, to the buyer? Of course, the distributor. Okay, you need distributor. You need intermediaries. Okay, sometimes we call it distributor, we call it intermediaries. So, so this is how we bring, we deliver the coke. And we also uh, bring the brand name, the coke. Or we know that coke belongs to Coca-Cola company. Right, so uh, we know the ownership of Coke from Coca-Cola company, so it's closer to the final buyer, to the customer, right? So we have two types of marketing channel, which is marketing channel that has no intermediary levels. So this is direct marketing channel. How about indirect? Indirect means you contain, you have one or more intermediary levels, means that you hire the intermediaries with you. So direct, no. Indirect, yes. Okay. So this is the diagram uh, that you can see between consumer marketing channel and business marketing channels. So just take a look closely. Okay. Try to understand. All right. Uh, I give you a few minutes, uh, one or two minutes to look and understand the diagram. Okay. Then what do you do? All right, so uh, we continue. Look at A diagram. So uh, it's stated here, consumer marketing channel. So you have three channels here. Channel one, channel two, channel three. Okay, uh, producer, consumer, producer to consumer. So look at the flow, producer to the consumer. Look at the arrows, producer to consumer. Okay, it's from top down relationship, right? Producer, retailer, consumer. This is channel number two. And channel number three, producer, wholesaler, retailer, consumer. So if you go to channel one, means that you are using direct channels. No channel member. Okay. A company sells directly to consumer. So no surprise there. Yes, we have this kind of company. For example, like Gecko and Quicken. Loans. This is an example in US market. Okay, so we have this type of um, uh, direct channels. Okay, producer directly to consumer, and we also have uh, indirect channels. Okay, these two indirect channels from producer to retailers. For producer, you hire the wholesaler and retailers, and to the consumer channel two and three. So using indirect channel, what happens? The company uses one or more levels. So this is example of one channel members or one intermediary. And this is two intermediaries. One or two or more levels, okay, of intermediaries to help bring products to the final consumer. For example, like most of the things that you buy. Okay, most of the things that you buy, everything from toothpaste to camera to cars. So this is example. So we need uh, intermediaries to help us uh, to get the product or service for our uh, daily routine, or what we call it product for our uh, daily routine, right? So the next one is business marketing channels. How about business or organization channels? Okay. It's quite similar with uh, consumer marketing channels. Okay. You have direct channel from producer to business customer or you have indirect channels for example like channel two and three where you have one channel or one intermediary level 
or two intermediate risk level. Okay, to help you bring the products. Okay, so producer to distributor, distributor to business customer, or producer to manufacturer representative or sales branch to business distributor and the business distributor to the business customer. All right. So channel members are connected by several types of flow. So if you take a look in here, okay, this flow in relationship is actually contains several types of flow. Either it is physical flow of product or flow of ownership, payment flow, information flow or promotion flow. So this is an uh, example of physical flow of uh, physical flow of products. Okay. All right. Then next, how does channel member interact, communicate, and how they perform their tasks or duties uh, in the channel members? So you need to understand when you are dealing with channel members, you are dealing with the behavior at the Galaga. So marketing channels conceive of firms or organization that have been partnered with the company by sharing the common good with each member playing a specialized role. So even though they, they partner together, they're working together and they have a similar or common uh, duties, but each of these channel members have their own specializations. Okay. And instead of that, because you are facing, you are <clears throat> confronting with uh, the behavior, you need to know that instead of uh, give you uh, uh, <clears throat> benefits, you will also face a conflict. So we will have a channel conflicts that refers to disagreement. Okay, disagreement among channel members over goals, over the roles, and over the rewards. Okay, so there are two types of conflicts or disagreement. First one is horizontal conflict. Third one is vertical conflict. Okay. <clears throat> this is uh, the diagram where we talk about the uh, conventional distribution center with vertical marketing system. Okay. Saya belum habis lagi yang uh, konflik ni lah. Saya nak terangkan pasal konflik ni. Okay. Kalau tengok kat penerangan kat bawah ni. Yeah? Okay. Let me see. What is horizontal conflict? Horizontal conflict occurs among firms that same level of channel. So, conflict disagreement ni berlaku among firms, organization that they are in the same level of channel. For example, like this one. Okay. Kalau kat sini. Okay. Uh, biasanya akan uh, horizontal ni dia melintang lah. Horizontal kan melintang. So, conflict tu berlaku antara Oh, for example, like retailer with wholesaler. Okay, retailer with uh, retailer. So this producer with other producer. So this is what we call horizontal conflict. Okay. How about vertical conflict? Vertical conflict pula. Um, okay, vertical conflict. Conflict between different levels. So conflict between different levels of the same channels. Of the same channels uh, is even more common. So, ni lebih banyak yang berlaku compared to horizontal conflict. For example, like McDonald's have recently faced growing conflict with the crops of almost 3,000 independent franchises. In recent company webcast based on the rising customer complaints that service isn't fast or fairly enough. So, McDonald's told its franchises that their cashiers need to smile more. Okay, this is because uh, not only uh, giving uh, or selling the products, okay, the menus, the foods, the fast food to the customer, they are also selling the service. Okay, bagi perkhidmatan. Okay, so this is what uh, they counter uh, the, the customer complaint. Okay, how they counter back the customer complaint. So they ask the franchisee, okay, to, to make more smile. Okay, smile. At the same time, it seems the franchisee weren't very happy with McDonald's. So either because of the recent slowdown in system-wide sales that has both sides on each. So 
ada yang tak setuju. It's not because of they are not uh, uh, they are not friendly. They are not put putting a, a, a more smiles to their customer. But it is because of the system what sales of McDonald's. So this is what we call a conflict between vertical conflict between the company, the 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 manufacturer with the uh, franchise franchisor. Okay, franchisor, franchisee. Okay, and to the customer. So dia ada juga berkat kalau you buka branch, okay, uh, franchise kita ada relationship ataupun flow of ownership kita panggil. Tadi flow of products kan, ada juga jenis flow of ownership. Contohnya bila buka franchise ataupun branches, okay. So between franchisor, owner of the company, owner of the brand, okay. For example, like McDonald, so we franchisee orang yang Uh, mendapat lesen sebagai franchise okey membuka franchise ataupun cawangan so kita panggil ni franchise so uh, this is the conflict between uh, franchisor and franchisee still from top to down okay? it is not horizontal it is vertical from top to down so this is example of vertical conflict kalau horizontal conflict tadi macam ni Uh, for instance, some firms may complain others still steal sale from them by pricing too low advertising outside their assigned territories. Other companies may involve overcharging or giving more poor service, hurting the overall image of the channel members. Okay. Ini biasanya berlaku uh, antara satu syarikat dengan syarikat yang lain. Okay. Uh, ianya tidak ada berkait dengan uh, channel members tapi dia berkait dengan firms. Okay, occur among firm that sell level of channels, right? Uh, contohnya macam McDonald dengan KFC, KFC dengan apa tu Texas, uh, macam tu lah. Okay, that is a conflict. Alright, we proceed to the next one. Okay. Uh, what is the comparison, okay, differences between conventional distribution channels with vertical marketing system? This is the latest, the newest, okay, the advanced system in uh, distribution channels. So, this is uh, where uh, our most of a common one use conventional distribution channel until today. Producer to wholesaler, wholesaler to retailer, retailer to consumer. This is what we call conventional, traditional. But nowadays, more companies, more organizations shift from conventional to BMS. Ataupun kita panggil vertical marketing system. What is vertical marketing system? Here is another fancy term. Dia salah fancy lah kan? Perkataan dia vertical. Oh, vertical maksudnya apa ya? But it's very simple concept. So it's simply a channel in which member at different levels, hence a vertical, okay, kalau awak tengok tadi, vertical kan, work together in unified way. So the, the, the keyword here is unified. So if it is similar like the conventional marketing channels, but it's different ways. Okay, instead of uh, work from one from one channel to another channel, from top to down, They work together as a unified way. Nampak tak? Unified system. They okay, working together. And, uh, and and their target is also to accomplish the work of China by delivering the product, services and values to the customer. Sama saja fungsi dia. Cuma cara dia berbeza. Yang ini lebih kepada vertical. Okay, nampak sangat vertical dia. From producer to box seller, retailer to consumer. Tapi ini lebih unified system. Lebih unified way. Okay. This is definition by term. Uh, what is conventional distribution system? It consists of one or more independent producer, wholesaler, retailers. Okay. Uh, each separate business seeking to maximize its own profits. Perhaps even at the expense of profits for the system as the whole. So each of these Uh, intermediaries, okay, level uh, semuanya mempunyai profit sendiri. For example, wholesaler, dia akan uh, cari profit untuk wholesaler. Retailers juga sama-sama. So, they want to achieve their own profits. Right? And they also want to maximize or minimize or 
uh, fully optimize their expense of profit for the system. So, uh, selain daripada tu, okay, now we shift to VMS. What is VMS? Uh, VMS provide channel leadership. So, dia provide channel leadership. Kesis of producer, wholesalers, retailers, ATS, Unipad. So, kat sini you akan nampak tak ada siapa yang jadi ketua. Okay, tak ada yang. So, everyone is a leaders. It's a unified system. Sama saja. Okay. And then, <clears throat> uh, when you conduct vertical marketing system, uh, you also implemented a corporate marketing system. You also can do contractual marketing system and administered marketing system. What is corporate marketing system, vertical marketing system? It's combined successive stages of production okay, and distribution under single ownership. So, salam satu, ownership saja. Tak ada berbeza-beza. Dia in under single ownership. Okay. And contractual vertical marketing system consists of independent firms at different levels of production and distribution who join together through contract. So, ada contract agreements. Itu sebab kita panggil contractual vertical. So, this is the beauty of VMS. Kat sini, when they link together, when they are working together, they link, they connect because of the contractual agreement. Kalau kat sini, producer, between producer and wholesaler. Okay, sahaja. Tapi retailers tak ada. Retailer pula antara wholesaler dengan retailer. Okay. And then retailer, retailer antara retailer dengan consumer. So, dia tak ada ownership ataupun kita panggil contract the whole system. Misalnya kalau ada masalah, any conflict, any disagreement, any complaints from the consumer about the product, about the services, what happens? And then dia pergi pada retailer. Retailer akan uh, check balik dengan wholesaler. Wholesaler akan check balik dengan producer or manufacturers. So, masa akan panjang untuk menyelesaikan masalah tersebut. So, instead of that, that's why we use VMS, Vertical Marketing System. Okay? Because we uh, combine, uh, we, 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 we combine together, we distribute, join together through contracts. Through contracts. So, uh, under Vertical Marketing System, we have franchise organizations. Contoh organisasi yang membuat, yang implement vertical marketing system adalah franchise. Okay, franchise. What is franchise? Franchise organisasi is a contractual vertical marketing system in the which a channel member called as a franchisor links several stages in the production distribution process. So, dia akan tahu semua proses. Tak semestinya macam ni, conventional, uh, Retailer hanya tahu proses retailer saja. Dia tak tahu tentang wholesaler, dia tak tahu tentang producer, especially tak tahu langsung tentang producer. Retailer hanya terima ambil beli barang secara bulk, in bulk, in, 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 in big numbers, okay, in big number of quantity, and then dijual kepada consumer and user. Tapi dia tak tahu apakah uh, ingredients, raw materials, how about the quality QC, quality control, tak tahu langsung, tak ambil tahu. Bila ada komplain daripada konsum, barulah uh, barulah tercari-cari macam mana nak cari jawapan atau penyelesaian. So, and then, uh, untuk yang uh, vertical marketing system, dalam kontrak tu, semua dah ter ter termaktub ataupun dah di list out. So, everyone, either you are producer, either you are wholesaler, either you are retailers, you must know the whole system, the whole process. Okay, so this is another uh types of uh, example of uh, vmf system which is franchise organizations okay kita juga ada administered vertical marketing system ada tiga kan tadi kan Verti uh, tadi kita dah cover on contractual okay and then administered vertical marketing system what is administered vertical marketing system is a vms that coordinates yang menyusun okay successive stages of productions and distributions through the size and power of one party. So, dia lebih kepada penyusunan successive stages. Maksudnya penyusunannya untuk supaya berjaya lah dari segi production and distribution bergantung kepada quantity, size, okay, size dan juga power. Okay, 
power kuasa of one of the party. Maksudnya semuanya ada uh, capacity dari segi power and size. Okay. Uh, so, instead of vertical marketing system, kita ada horizontal marketing system. Okay, horizontal secara melintang. Tadi vertical macam tu kan? Melintang. So, horizontal marketing system is a channel arrangement in which two or more companies at one level join together to follow a new marketing opportunity. So, for example, like uh, target partners with CVS Health who operate store within store to benefit of all target CVS and their mutual. Ni target lah. CVS Pharmacy. So, they are working together. From one company to another company, they are working together. They are conduct uh, or follow uh, the horizontal marketing system. Okay. Ini berbeza dengan vertical tadi. Vertical, uh, for example, like from producer, wholesaler, retailers uh, working together to deliver the product and service to the customer. Tapi horizontal, one company with another company, uh, they arrange together, okay, at one level, okay, to follow new marketing system. For example, like apa dia? Company A, Company B. Uh, yang menggunakan channel arrangement yang sama. Uh, apa dia ni ya? Uh, contoh ni. Contoh, contoh, contoh. Kalau kat sini target. Target target ni target. Uh, kat US ada company nama target. Yang menjual banyak household. Household. Household uh, uh, merchandise. Household products. Kepada consumer. They collaborate with CVS Health, okay? CVS is a pharmacy, okay? So, they have a mutual customer, ada uh, customer yang sama. So, they are working together and use horizontal marketing system. Menggunakan horizontal marketing system. Kalau kita kat sini, kita ada Aeon. Kita ada Aeon, uh, Aeon dengan Aeon Wellness. Okay, contoh Aeon dengan Aeon Wellness. Ini adalah horizontal marketing system. Okay, ataupun... Dekat dalam, uh, uh, apa lagi ya yang menarik yang kita boleh contoh. Uh, itu antara, antara contohnya lah. Aeon dengan Aeon Wellness menggunakan uh, horizontal marketing. Dia ada satu company dengan company yang lain. Sekejap, saya nak cari. Apa yang contoh? Bagi saya masa sikit. Saya akan cari. Ataupun saya akan masukkan dalam padlet nanti. Uh, example of horizontal marketing system. Okay. And then we also have multi-channel distribution system. Kita ada, kita ada conventional, kita ada uh, vertical, kita ada horizontal and we also have multi-channel distribution system. Banyaknya. Ya, yeah, kita memang banyak channel. Okay. So, multi-channel distribution system, ini adalah contoh diagram. Uh, figure 12.4. Okay. Uh, kejap. Eh, ada student saya ada masalah. I stop for one. Kejap. Ini yang tengah jawab. Yes, ada kawan awak ada masalah nak jawab item so saya setelkan dulu nanti saya sambung sekejap hmm. Okay, so saya dah bagi solution. Harapnya dia boleh buat lah. Okay, alright. Uh, how about multi-channel distribution system? Uh, producer, okay, kita ada consumer segment 1, consumer segment 2, business segment 1, segment 2. Tampak tak? 
is a combination between consumer market and business market. So bila ada uh, company yang uh, uh, dealing with a two type of market, consumer and business market, definitely they need to use multi multi channel distribution channel system. Okay, so uh, direct 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 channel, for example, like producer to consumer segment one. So they use uh, the catalogs or online mobile. Okay, so kita ada indirect channels. Okay, for example, like they use one. Uh, intermediary level, for example, retailer. This is consumer segment two. Ataupun uh, they use uh, two intermediary levels. For example, uh, they have distributors, dealers. Okay, this is for the business market, business segment one. And the company also use uh, also have uh, another uh, direct, okay, direct channel. For example, that like producer to business segment two. They are using. Oh, they are the sales force, other intermediaries kat sini. Okay, they use sales force kat sini. Kat sini dah ada lah. They guna sales force kat sini. Yang ini guna online. Okay. So, there are two types of market. Consumer market and business market. So, bila ada consumer market and business market, kita panggil multi-channel distribution system. Dia tak boleh guna conventional, tak boleh guna vertical, tak boleh guna horizontal. Boleh guna multi-channel distribution system. Okay. Apa itu multi-channel distribution system? System in which single firms set up two or more marketing channel to reach one or more customer segments. Okay. And what happened okay, in the behavior and organizations when we face changing channel organizations? So, apa yang berlaku bila ada perubahan? Okay, perubahan dalam uh, channel organization kita. Okay. Uh, this intermediation, kita panggil this intermediation. The terms is this intermediation. What is this intermediation? Cutting out the marketing channel intermediaries by producers or the displacement of traditional seller by new intermediaries. So, for example, like Toys R Us case. Toys R Us pioneered the superstore format that once made it the go-to place for buying toys. Okay, semua orang tahu apa itu Toys R Us. Toys R Us adalah place for Uh, toys, okay, toys. Budak-budak semua suka toys, okay. If you want to buy toys, you go to Toys R Us. So, af but after falling victim to shift in toy market sales to big discounters like Walmart, what happened in US? Bila datangnya competitor yang lain, Walmart, uh, and also online merchants like Amazon, okay. So the retail, the retail giant was forced to close down. Sebab tu lah Toys R Us dah tak nampak lagi. Dekat US, they all, they need to close down the operation and shut the store because of the the big discounter Walmart and then that online merchant Amazon. So this is what we call this intermediation, cutting out the marketing channel intermediaries by producer or displacement of traditional reseller by new intermediaries. Okay, sebab kita terpaksa tutup kerana uh, datangnya online tadi online merchant datang lagi uh, big discounter uh, for example like Walmart big discounter ni adalah seperti uh, uh, retailers ataupun wholesalers lah wholesalers eh discount store kita panggil discount store okay. yang lebih murah berbanding toys dekat Toys R Us okay how to identify major channel alternative when you open a company so Uh, you need to design, okay? You need to know how to design the marketing channel. So, in designing the marketing channel, okay, you must analyze your customer needs. Okay, it's, it's also refer back to your marketing process. Kena juga analyze the customer needs. You must set your objectives, the channel objectives, and identify what the alternative, what the options, and you must evaluate those alternatives, those options. Okay, analyzing consumer needs, setting channel objective, identifying channel alternatives, evaluate the channel's alternatives. So, how to analyze the customer needs? In order to analyze the customer need, you need to find out what target customer want from the channels. Apa yang dia nak sebenarnya? And you need to identify the market segment. Bila you buat market segmentation, you are the target market, you akan identify their market segments. And determine what is the best channels for each of these market segments. You need to identify the best channels to be used and minimize the cost. 
when you choose, when you select the best sign channel, you must make sure that the best channels give you minimized cost, optimized cost, so that you can meet customer service requirement. Okay. How to set channel objective? How to set the objective? You need to determine the targeted or the uh, the targeted levels, the targeted level intermediaries. Okay. Of customer service, can I determine setiap level tu apa dia punya customer service, apa objective dia, okay? And must balance up, okay, between your customer needs with the cost and with the price preferences. Must be balanced. Kalau tak balance, uh, that is not a good objective, okay? That is not a good channel objective. So how to identify major alternative? How to identify types of intermediaries? Sebab dalam setiap intermediary level tu dia ada banyak tadi kan? Okay, how to identify major alternatives? You need to refer to your channel members available to carry out the channel work. Most companies face many channel member choices. So, biasanya bila kita buka business, bila kita buka company, kita akan nampak banyak alternatif. Okay, banyak intermediaries. Okay, so kita pilih yang mana satu yang paling penting. Contohnya sekarang banyak guna online. Okay, online biasanya direct saja. From producer to consumer. Ataupun maybe you nak cari agent okay that is the best way instead of you hantar orang bayar orang bayar gaji orang kan so you bagi buka open as a dropshipping company okay you dropshipping kami you cari dropshipper they dropship ataupun dropship see so you you promote dropships who wants to get profit okay so you just zero commission uh, zero 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 investment Okay, zero investment. Tak perlu investment, tak perlu capital. Hanya jual saja produk tu dan you akan dapat commission based on that. So, what is the function of dropship? Dropship is to promote the product through online or e-commerce platform. For example, like Lazada, Shopee, so on so forth. Banyak lagi. So, biasanya uh, kita kena identify the functions. What is the best intermediaries that we want to use? If you are using online, okay, biasanya kita akan minimize the cost kita guna direct channels. Ataupun kita nak indirect channel, kita hanya menggunakan sales agent. Ataupun dropship. Okay, dropshipper. Itu saja. Alright. Uh, how to identify uh, number of marketing intermediaries? Okay, basically we we identify number of marketing intermediaries yang kita nampak tadi. Satu channels, dua channels, okay. Ataupun satu level intermediaries, dua level intermediaries, okay. Berapa banyak number of intermediaries yang kita perlukan. So, tengok. Kita ada tiga types. Intensive distribution, exclusive distribution, selective distribution. Apa itu intensive distribution? Okay, intensive distribution is a strategy in which they are the stock, okay, stock their product as many outlet as possible. Ni adalah intensive distribution. So, semua tempat ada produk kita available for the consumer. So, ni adalah intensive distribution. For exclusive distribution, producer give only limited number of dealers. Limited number of distributor who will get the exclusive right to distribute its product in their territories. Okay, this is uh, exclusive distributions. It's often found in distributions of luxury brands. Lah. Yes, luxury brands. Okay. How about selective distribution? Selective distribution is between intensive and exclusive. Intensive dengan eksklusif. So, in between, it's less selective. So, antara antara intensive dengan uh, eksklusif, tengah-tengah tu selective. So, the use of more than one but fewer than all the intermediaries. Ada satu ataupun uh, kurang daripada banyak intermediaries yang ada. Okay, satu atau dua. Who are willing to carry company's product. Most co consumer, for example, like uh, consumer electronics, consumer furniture, consumer home appliance and brands are distributed in this manner. So, biasanya barang-barang produk yang harian ni, yang consumer guna dalam rumah ataupun uh, di pejabat, biasanya kita guna selective distributions. Intensive ataupun selective. Kalau grocery, kita guna intensive. Kalau selective, for example, appliances, uh, furniture, electronics, okay, gadgets, okay, kita akan guna selective. Kalau luxury brand, kita guna kita guna exclusive. Okay, exclusive. Alright. So, next. 
Okay. How to identify major alternative based on the responsibility of channel members? Okay. Uh, a producer and the intermediaries need to agree. So, can, kena setuju. Producer and intermediaries. Sama ada you are distributor. For example, like you are wholesaler, retailers, okay, agents, okay. Uh, you must agree. Agree on what? Agree on the price policy. Harga sekian-sekian. Setuju? Setuju. Okay, if you want to mark up, okay, you can mark up the price. But we deal. How many percent? Okay, price policy. Condition of sales. What is the condition of sales? Okay, how much that you want to meet the number of sales? Per month, per year, for three years? So you must agree on that. Territory rights. Okay, territory rights lebih kepada location. Okay, territory right based on the location. Ini termasuk dalam contract tool agreement contohnya macam franchise organizations. Specific services, kena clear, kena agree. Specific uh, services, perkhidmatan apa yang kita nak tawarkan. Customer service, okay, customer service kita handle apa? Complaints, return back on uh, the products, okay. So, banyak lagi. Okay. Uh, how to evaluate the major alternative? Okay, we also evaluate based on economic criteria, control issue, adaptability criteria. Ni adalah additional lah. Additional on how to evaluate. Uh, tadi kita dah identify major kan? Lepas tu kita kena evaluate. Macam mana kita nak evaluate uh, intermediaries kita ni bagus based on the economic criteria. Based on their control issue. Based on their adaptability. Sesuai ke tidak? Okay. Okay. How company select, motivate and evaluate their channel members? Sebab kita tahu when we have channel members, when we have intermediaries, we are dealing with other entity. Okay, kita ada. Uh, dan mereka wholesaler, retailers, uh, sales agent, marketing intermediaries, for example, like uh, dropship. Okay. Mereka adalah manusia. Okay, kebanyakan ni manusia lah. Okay. So, we need to select, we need to choose, we need to motivate them. And we need to evaluate on their performance. So, how to select, how to manage, how to motivate, how to evaluate channel members this is under channel members eh, sorry channel management decisions ini keputusan keputusan yang kamu kena buat bila dah ada uh, channel members bila dah ada delivery network ni okey uh, bila you dah con, uh, you dah, dah start dengan uh, chan, uh, creating your own marketing channels you need to do you need to uh, decide okey you need to decide buat keputusan okey what type of decision that you need to make Selecting, managing, motivating and evaluating. Okay, ada empat. Alright, uh, kalau tanya saya, Madam, uh, apa tu setiap satu explanation on this? Okay, kalau select, for example like, kita pergi select eh. Kita pergi. Selecting channel members, okay. Lihat kepada qualified marketing intermediaries, mesti qualified. Kalau tak qualified, buat apa? You hire mereka. Sebab you akan bayar fees ataupun bayar dia punya uh, gaji, salaries kan. So, we need to make sure that they work for the uh, with their enough qualified intermediary. Okay, for example uh, like uh, this example lah, you boleh baca example Timex ni. Okay, example how they select good channel members. Okay. Alright. Uh, how to manage? Okay. Once you dah choose, once you select, okay, you must continuously, nampak perkataan tu, continuously manage. Kena sentiasa manage, kena sentiasa motivate. So that they will work hard, they will work uh, with their own level best, okay. So, the company must sell not only through the intermediary but also to and with them. Company, manufacturer, producer, tak boleh jual melalui intermediary tak boleh. Oh saya jual produk and service ni melalui intermediary. Itu saja that's it. Tak, you need to take care. You need to know, you need to manage them. You need to control them. So you must also join with them. Be with them. Okay? In managing channel members company practice partner relationship. Okay, PRM kita ada cara lah ataupun Uh, strateginya bila kita nak manage channel members, kita guna partner relationship, okay, management. 
PRM and Supply Chain Management SCM to develop long-term relationship. So, ada dua praktis yang bila kita nak manage channel members ni. Uh, practice partner relationship, okay, uh, partner relationship management dengan channel, oh sorry, supply chain management. So, C, S, C, M, supply chain management. Why we practice these two type of management? Because we want to develop long-term relationship with our channel members. Then, how to evaluate the channel members? How to evaluate the channel members? You must regularly, tadi continuously manage them, be part with them, be with them, okay. And you must also regularly checking on their performance so that you will not against the standards such as the sales quota, such as the average inventory levels, delivery time, the treatment of damage and lost goods or cooperation in company promotion, training program. Ini adalah contoh-contoh macam mana kita nak evaluate on our channel members. Okay. So, then next one. Okay, what will be uh, the public policy and distribution decisions? Okay, dia ada a few public policy yang you kena ambil tahu. Okay, kita ada exclusive distributions, exclusive dealing, exclusive territorial agreements, tying agreements. What is exclusive distribution? When the producer gives only a limited number of dealers, the exclusive right to distribute its product in their territories. Okay, ini biasanya exclusive distributions, okay? Luxury brands, luxury products, okay? Exclusive dealings is when the seller require that exclusive distribution seller not handle competitors' product. Exclusive territory agreement where producer or seller limit territory. Tying agreement are uh, agreement where the dealer must take most of all of the line. Ni biasanya luxury brands lah. Okay, what is the nature and importance of marketing, logistic, and integrated supply chain management? Ni you kena tahu. Bila kita cerita pasal Uh, tadi uh, cerita pasal marketing channels Dia antara lain selain daripada marketing channel adalah marketing logistik Okay, logistik Channel mesti ada logistik Okay, sebab kita nak tahu place dekat mana Logistik dekat mana, location dekat mana Sebab when you deliver the product and service You must also provide the logistik And how to integrate this in your supply chain management Okay So, marketing logistic is a physical distribution. Okay, involve planning, implementing, controlling the physical flow of goods, services and related information from points of origin to points of consumption to meet the consumer requirement at a profit. So, itu kita panggil marketing logistic. Dia melibatkan planning, implementing, controlling, physical flow tu. Okay, flow tu. Physical flow tu yang nampak tadi vertical, horizontal, uh, multi-channel semua banyak sekali. So, what is the physical flow, goods, services and related information from points of origin, okay, from <coughs> dealers, from wholesaler to retailers, from retailers to sales agent to, uh, to, 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 to consumer, okay. And how does this point of origin to points of consumption meet the customer requirement of, uh, ataupun at a profit. So, bila kita ada marketing logistik, kita akan dapat Uh, flow of uh, good services tadi and some of the related information that we want to deliver from uh, your, your your channel members okay uh, to your customer it will oh, it will give the profit it will uh, provide a values tak semestinya kita nak bagi saja produk tu deliver produk tu saja kepada customer okay tapi in return we want a profit we want a profit so This is the best thing about marketing logistic. Okay, marketing logistic. Right. Okay. Uh, bila tanya madam, okay, madam, macam mana bentuk chain, uh, supply chain management? Okay, ini adalah supply chain management. Okay, tadi marketing logistic, kita masuk supply chain management. So, supply chain management uh, diagram ataupun flow, inilah dia. Kita ada supplier, kita ada customer. In between supplier and customer, ada company, ada reseller. Okay, supplier, we have inbound logistic. Okay, inbound logistic. Okay, suppliers to company, inbound logistic. Company to reseller is a outbound logistic. Okay, and then reseller to customer. So, ataupun customer boleh pergi kepada reseller, boleh pergi kepada company, boleh pergi kepada supplier. And this is what we call as reverse logistic. 
So managing the supply chain calls for customer oriented or centered thinking. Okay. Remember, it's also called as customer value delivery network. <coughs> Sorry. Selain daripada kita panggil sebagai supply chain management, we also call it as customer value delivery network. Okay. So, tadi, uh, apa itu maksud supply chain management? It involves managing upstream and downstream. Kita dah belajar tadi kan upstream, downstream. Okay. Upstream chain dengan uh, downstream chain. Apa beza dia? Okay. So, upstream and downstream value added flows of material, final goods and related information among supplier, the company, retailer and final consumer. So, goal of marketing logistics should be provide a targeted level of customer service at the less or the least cost. So, setiap goal ni ataupun target ni adalah di mana kita nak pastikan setiap, 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 setiap logistik yang kita pergi ni. So, contohnya supplier ke company, company ke reseller, reseller ke customer. Mestilah bagi kita list cost. Cost yang sangat minimas. Okay. So, apa function logistik? Okay, functionnya sebagai warehousing. Kenapa kita perlukan logistik? Supaya kita boleh, uh, ia hanya adalah untuk letak stok kita, warehousing. Inventory management, transportation, logistic information. So, these are some of the uh, logistic functions. Okay, saya akan pergi. Uh, Warehousing, production and consumption cycles very less. So do so most company must store their goods while they wait to be sold. So, ini tempat waiting waiting place lah. Kalau stok masuk, dia akan letak kat situ warehouse. Okay. So a company must decide on how many and what types of warehouses it needs. Instead ada gudang. Ataupun dalam bahasa Melayu kita panggil gudang lah. Okay. And where they will be located, kat mana. Memang penting. Sebab kita nak letak kita punya inventory ataupun stock. And the, mark, the company might use either storage house houses ataupun kita panggil distribution center. Storage warehouses ataupun distribution center. So, uh, bila kita ada storage warehouses ataupun distribution center, kita kena pastikan uh, the goods ataupun the product for moderate to long periods. Tak boleh terlampau lama sangat dia punya dalam gudang tersebut. Okay. Uh, compare dengan distribution center, it move good rather than just store them. So, kalau storage, lebih boleh simpan lama. Kalau distribution center, sebaiknya dia flow-nya cepat. Okay, mesti cepat. Masuk, keluar, masuk, keluar. Kalau storage, uh, boleh untuk uh, moderate lah. Moderate to longest period. Maksudnya, uh, sedana, moderate, uh, Masa yang terus sederhana hingga masa yang panjang. Jaga masa sederhana dengan jaga masa panjang. Kita boleh simpan jaga masa sederhana ataupun jaga masa. Just store it warehouse. Tapi distribution center mesti cepat. Okay. Tak boleh simpan terlampau lama. Okay. And then inventory management mesti ada uh, inventory system. Ini kita akan belajar nanti. Kita akan tanya nanti dalam webinar after coming back from mid semester break nanti. Kita akan ada webinar bersama dengan uh, pelajar alumni IPTT. Uh, Cik Fatih, eh Cik Afika, sorry Cik Afika. Cik Afika akan sharing, buat sharing di mana dia bekerja di sebelah sebuah uh, organisasi yang sangat besar di Malaysia. Okay, Uplu. Uh, dan juga uh, dia akan sharing kepada kita dari segi innovation in terms of dia punya retailer, uh, retailer company. Okay, retailer company. What type of technology they use, the innovations. For example, lah, kalau you tahu uh, RFID sangat banyak digunakan dalam uh, inventory untuk Uniqlo. Okay, Uniqlo company. So, kat situ kita akan belajar nanti further discussions on that. So, inventory management, so, so salah satu contohnya, innovationnya adalah kita guna RFID lah. Okay, RFID system. Uh, ini untuk uh, event, inventory management. Okay, smart shelf. Ada juga gunakan smart shelves. Okay, banyak lagi. Uh, transportation, uh, pastikan transportation, transportation kita nak gunakan uh, It won't affect the pricing products lah Kalau terlampau produknya kecil saja, sikit saja Tapi you nak guna lori, kontainer uh, tak tak berpatutan lah kan So pastikan transport yang you guna tu adalah effective Okay, uh, it delivery the performance, condition of goods when they arrive So biasanya sekarang banyak guna courier services kan Kurir services, okay. So that's it. Uh, then kita pergi kepada uh, what else? Uh, ada integrated logistic management. 
the granted logistic management is the recognition that providing customer service and trimming distribution costs require teamwork internally and externally. Ni kita panggil integrated saling saling bekerjasama. Okay, integrated logistic management. Contohnya kita guna sistem apa? Oracle Supply Management, Supply Chain Management Software. You might combine together the system uh, is easy to use where the channel members can use it together and it requires uh, the teamwork internally and externally lah dalam company tu sendiri ataupun luar company boleh guna Oracle Supply Chain Management Software. Ini kita panggil Integrated Logistic Management. So that's it for our topic. Selamat Hari Raya, Aidil Fitri. Uh, so next week will be um, uh, your mid-semester break for one week and also your Hari Raya celebration. So that's uh, uh, why I would like to take a good opportunity for today. I would like to wish you Selamat Hari Raya, Aidil Fitri. Maaf Zahir dan Batin. So saya akan, uh, saya mohon maaf jika ada sebarang kesilapan terkasar bahasa yang mengguris hati ataupun uh, yang, yang yang apa yang yang buat awak terasa hati okey saya mohon maaf saya menyusul 10 jari memohon maaf dan juga saya juga maafkan segala kesilapan kesalahan pelajar-pelajar saya pelajar 1 bitek section 1 uh, sama ada uh, saya sedari ataupun uh, yang yang saya sedar ataupun tak sedar okey saya maafkan awak semua so uh, Selain daripada tu saya nak ucapkan juga semoga uh, bila kita berhari raya uh, dalam uh, situasi pandemik of COVID-19 ni dah pastikan kepada mereka yang berada di kawasan PKP, PKPP, PKP, PKPB, okay, PKPD uh, mematuhi SOP, okay, SOP untuk berhari raya. Janganlah terlampau bersukaria sehingga kita mengabaikan SOP. Kita jaga kita dan juga pastikan semua orang uh, uh, sentiasa mematuhi SOP dan tidak menyebabkan lagi, menambahkan lagi pertambahan kes uh, pesakit COVID-19. Alright, So jaga diri baik-baik uh, sambil makan rendang, sambil makan kuih raya, sambil makan uh, lontong ketupat lemang. Uh, jaga juga kesihatan, okay? Sebab nanti lepas habis mid semester break nak balik semula ke kelas, okay? Online kelas kita nak continue balik, nak sambung balik uh, semester yang 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 tujuh lagi semester yang uh, lapan lebih kurang lapan enam enam semester yang akan yang yang lebih lagi tu habis. So balik nanti uh, pastikan uh, sampaikan salam saya kepada mak bapa awak, parents sawah, okay? Kepada siapa yang Uh, berada di UTEM, pulang ke kampung berhati-hati, selamat uh, perjalanan pulang ke kampung halaman masing-masing, ok uh, pastikan semua orang uh, berhati-hati di jalan raya sentiasa beringat ok, so itu sajalah untuk setakat hari ini, uh, kepada pelajar yang tidak beragama Islam ok, yang bukan beragama Islam saya juga ingin mengucapkan selamat bercuti Uh, semoga cuti yang uh, yang kamu dapat ni selama seminggu cuti semester dapat kamu luangkan masa bersama keluarga bantu mak ayah dan juga apa lagi uh, menelaah pelajaran juga ya jangan lupa uh, itu saja daripada saya terima kasih banyak banyak uh, jaga diri semua assalamualaikum have a nice day everyone kubat take care uh, assalamualaikum bye bye